Hi, my name is Sam Cusimano, and welcome to this MIDI Sprout tutorial. Today, we will be further examining our soldered circuit board from our MIDI Sprout kit. I'm going to be adding one of our included Easter eggs, which is a control voltage output that can be used to interface your MIDI Sprout with a variety of analog modular synthesizer equipment. Now, the control voltage output on the MIDI Sprout is really just one of the fading LEDs pulse width modulating and running through a low pass filter circuit. This is not a true analog voltage output as much as it's a stepped pulse width modulated output. Uh, we have two components, a 3.9K resistor and a 0.1 microfaraday capacitor that goes to ground. We will be using SMD surface mount components to assemble our control voltage input. I have included these small square surface mount pads all across the MIDI Sprout circuit board. So even the LEDs or all of the resistors and most of the capacitors could be replaced with surface mount components. This makes it lesser expensive and easier to assemble when you're doing a larger run, but for an individual I wanted to make sure that there are through-hole spaces for the majority of components. For the control voltage output, I have not included holes for th uh, through-hole components, mostly because I was running out of room on the circuit board. If you want to, you can easily attach small jumper wires to each of the pads and build this with uh, larger components off-board. For uh, this demonstration today, I'm going to be using this 3.9K surface mount resistor and uh, this 0.1 microfaraday capacitor. I have one additional 0.1 microfaraday capacitor that I'm also going to add. The 328P chip uh, can be decoupled using a 0.1 microfaraday capacitor uh, going between its power and ground inputs. This smooths out some of the ripples, the higher frequency modulations that might be going through the power line. And uh, this is mostly notable because we're using a 555 timer. I also have a uh, 0.1 microfaraday capacitor going across the power leads of the 555 timer already. Again, this is to remove noise in the system. I didn't include this 0.1 microfaraday capacitor for the AT Mega chip in the MIDI Sprout kit, um, but it is not a bad idea to decouple all of your power inputs uh, for any microprocessor or uh, chip that you're using on the circuit. So now let's heat up our uh, soldering iron and start to install the components. Using a small piece of bent wire or a cutoff lead from one of our resistors or capacitors, I make a small tool that helps me move around the components since the surface mount parts are so small. They can easily stick to your hand or a magnetic screwdriver. So a small bent lead can sometimes really help when trying to put a, a project together. I'm going to move around the components and try to arrange them so I have the 0.1 capacitor just above the 3.9K resistor. The reason I'm just lining this up on my uh, board here is I want to use a piece of blue tape to try and help me hold the surface mount components in place while I go and do my soldering. So here I've torn off a piece of blue tape, even that's too big for these parts. So I'll tear off a little tiny strip. Now carefully approach the components that are on my board and stick them with the piece of tape. There we go. Moving the board back in place. we can position the components to be just above the solder pads that we've already tinned. All right, now let's take our soldering iron and 
carefully solder on the one side of each of these two components. The component will heat up very, very quickly. And if we have a little bit of solder on the tip of our iron, it will flow from the component onto the solder pad below it. I'm going to use my bent lead here to put a little bit of pressure on top of the components while I apply heat. And that'll make sure that the components are sit situated as close to the circuit board as possible. When hand soldering surface mount components, it's very easy to have them stick up. So don't be embarrassed if it's not beautiful. There. Now we'll remove the tape and apply solder to the other side. Here I will heat up the pad, add some solder, and the resistor is completed. Now we'll do the same process to the capacitor. All right. So again, our connection isn't super beautiful here, but I can see that the solder is connecting on both sides of each of the components, and there are no bridges across the components. It's very easy to make mistakes when soldering very close together surface mount components. Now for the last piece here, I want to add this uh, 0.1 microfaraday capacitor here near the uh, AT Mega chip. So again, I'll take some solder and I'm going to tin the pad very lightly. I only want a little tiny bit of solder on the pad before I put the component down. Again, I'm going to grab a piece of blue tape, which has been a great helper so far, and stick it halfway on the component. Now I will position the component and the blue tape right on the circuit board, directly above the pad that I've just tinned. And now I will add a little tiny bit of solder to the tip of my iron and solder the component into place. Pull off the tape and now let's solder the other side. It's a very, very small component on a very small circuit board. Now let's power the MIDI sprout on to make sure we didn't mess anything up plug in the battery pack, assuring that the red wire is on the power side and the black wire is on the ground side. The red wire goes on the side with the green potentiometer. Turn the sprout over and turn the knob. Excellent. If I touch these pads, I will give a little bit of data to the MIDI sprout and the lights light up accordingly. Excellent. Now let's plug in a MIDI input jack. Uh, this is running into my computer through a USB connection. And just check to monitor if the MIDI data is also flowing into the computer. I have my MIDI monitor set up over here. And when I touch the electrode pads, data comes right into the MIDI sprout and into the MIDI input. The control data that you see over here coming out of control 80 is the exact data that's coming through the control voltage output. Now I didn't build on a physical output jack in this particular build, but uh, there is a CV1 port right here, and you can grab ground from really anywhere on the circuit board by running this CV point to the tip of a jack and running that into your analog modular synthesizer, you will see between uh, 0 and 5, well, maybe 4.7 volts. I hope that you've learned something in this build, and I hope that you can enjoy utilizing your MIDI sprout. Thank you much for joining us.